Hey guys, this is Zach with WorkingJoe'sRoundTable.com. What we're going to do today is go over how to use the UEI DAFM3. Now there is a newer model than the one I'll be using. This is the one I've used for years. There's a 3B that has a little metal connection at top. And I think that connection was redone because it tends to kind of, if you, if it has some age on it, or if you are trying to stretch it out a little bit farther than it can handle, it'll come loose and give you an error signal. But first we're going to take a look at the tool itself. Then we're going to measure CFM on a return filter grill. It'll be the one at my house, which is a 30 by 20 filter grill. And I'll show you how to do that and how to calculate the free area. And pretty much what I do to get my CFM. Guys, measurements. this is the box that the DAFM3 came in. It has two little plastic latches. And it's been around for a good while now, so it's relatively durable. It has the vein with the cord here. And then we have the actual head itself. And the cord will plug into the top. You can see the little... Just like one of the Testo temperature clamps, basically. You can see that. And then it'll fit together. So what we'll do is we'll take the flat side, fit it right there in the top. You see the flat side goes on the back. So everything is plugged in. We can start it up. Just push in the button. It starts up. And to do the airflow measurement, we're going to be holding this mode button down for five seconds. And then we'll go into how we do the airflow calculation. So now I have that, and there's a different measurements. As you can see here, I don't know if you can see the insignia down there. There's a length and a width if you're doing like a square duct. But I'm going to go all the way to area because I'm doing, hit it twice, and you'll see foot squared area. So that's what I'll be doing. And there's our measurement that I'm using for this grill. It's already in there. I'm going to show you now where I got that measurement. This is HardenCoolie.com. You can see the files. If you go to the HardenCoolie website, there'll be different catalogs you can download. And this is the Residential Grills catalog. Make sure we're getting all this here. Let me back that camera. There we are. So I look through here. Those are some baseboard grills. You see baseboard diffusers, return grills. I'll keep moving through there. You see there's some stamp face stuff. But what I'm looking for, I think, is a 673. Let me see if I can find them. A 673. And you get all sorts of grills here. It'll give you information on the AK factors, which is the free area. So let's go down through here. Here's the first return grill. You can see the 659 return air filter grill. All steel construction. This is your steel grills. These aren't aluminum. One third spaced fence at 20 degrees. Now the grill I have is going to be one half spaced fence. So I know this is not the right one. Let's see, we have now the 673 return air filter grill, all steel constructions, one half spaced at 40 degrees, which matches up closely with what I have here. So, 40 degree fins, and you can see the fins themselves will transition over there, and they're spaced at one half inches. So let's take a look at the grill itself, and I'll show you what it looks like. Now you can hear the machine is running, and we have these fins, and you see the fins are almost at a 45 degree angle, which kind of mesh with what it says about the... 40 degree fin, uh, fin angle and they're at half inch intervals. Everybody's seen usually older grills that ha have a closer interval and they're one third spaced. So there's our grill and we're going to go back to the engineering data to find our free area for this 30 by 20 grill. Alright after we have our information as far as the grill type we're gonna go find the engineering data on this grill. So here we are. We're at the engineering data for the 672, 674 return air grill and 673 return air filter grill. So we're going to look for the 30 by 20 and once I highlight it I'll give you a zoomed in look at it. Alright guys we can see the 30 by 20 grill there you can see that the AK factor is 2.69 that is 2.69 square feet of exposed area that is discounting the area that is blocked by the fins and the grill itself so we can plug that into the DAFM3 which is what I've already done and then we can go ahead and take our CFM measurements. As soon as we hit the enter button, the countdown will start. And after 20 seconds, or you can hit the record button to kind of speed past the countdown. After 20 seconds, you're going to get a 30 second interval to measure the airflow. It doesn't have a setting where you hit a button to start or hit a button to stop, like some of the other airflow meters. It just gives you 30 seconds. 
I never really had a problem with just using that interval and kind of dividing it up. Like I have a grill that has five banks of fins and I pretty much just split up six seconds per row. And I'll show you how I do that when I measure the airflow. But you know, you have your square foot set right here. You can get all that from the Hart and Cooley website. So as soon as we hit enter, we're gonna start measuring this airflow. One of the things I think is worth mentioning is the fact that if you're measuring airflow on these systems, give it a good bit of time before it runs in AC because the coil will become saturated with water and you'll get a true sense of what the air conditioning is pushing most of the time. That's one of the things I sort of stumbled onto while we were testing the iConnect recently that we needed to give it a good amount of time before we actually made that measurement because the measurement did change quite a bit over a 20 to 30 minute period and we're going to do some more testing on that as we pit the DAFM3 versus the iConnect for estimating airflow but for right now we're going to go ahead and measure this grill behind me and we'll see what we get all right we have our 2.69 I'm gonna hit enter it's gonna start a 20 second countdown so I'm gonna go ahead over here hold it about three quarters of an inch or an inch off the grill and since there's five banks of fins I'm going to go down each row give it about six seconds so it'll give me a countdown on the screen why right, that beat means we're going to get started so I'll run down this bank until I get to it's going to count down from 24 or from 30 so six seconds on the bottom. six seconds on that side down to 12 Done. So we have 919. So we hit enter. We're going to go up to the same number again and hit enter again. I'm going to count down. We're going to do it three times because I think three times is a good measure. We'll see what we get each one of these times. I'm going to go ahead and push record because I can see our velocity. We have a foot per minute velocity until the uh, the beep goes off and we're measuring. So we have 236. There's our beep. It's going to give us various CFMs while we're doing this. So we got about 920 the first go through. That time we got about 9.51, so a variance of about 5% or so. So let's go through one more time and see what we get. We started the countdown. Try to make it as even as possible across all parts of the grill. Nine sixty-three that time. So let's try it one more time because we have two that were pretty close together and one that was out of range by about, we'll say five percent or so. So let's see what we get. Let's see if we get it again in our last two cluster, and now we can rule out that one reading as sort of an anomaly. So I'm going to hit the enter again. We're going to go for number four. You definitely want to do this more than once because there is some air. If you lag behind, if you don't hold it just right, you have a little bit of air. So you want to do it a few times and average it out. So we're going through the banks again. Different parts of the grill will have different CFMs. There will be different velocities.
and we have 962. So I think we could probably rule out the first one as an anomaly and we'll take the 953 and 962. So we could say we're between 950 and 960, which is exactly where it was last time I did this. Now there is some stuff I take into account when I do work on this stuff and I use this vein anemometer. There's one thing that I always keep in my mind is that no matter what's coming through the grill, there's a certain amount of air that's going to be bypassing this particular point. There's going to be duct leakage, there's going to be leakage on the return side of the machine. So you have to take that into account. So what I usually do is I give a little uh, air above what I read. Uh, something like between 2 and 5% I think is fair. Because on older systems it's going to be greater, on newer systems it's going to be less. Uh, so you know the, most machines are rated for 2% leakage. So even if it has 2% leakage on the return side, you know you're covered for that. So if we have 960 and we say between 2 and 5%, you know that's 18 CFM to probably around 50 CFM or so, just roughly speaking. So you could say that we're probably right around 1,000 CFM for this 3-ton machine. Guys, I will make sure we put the Hart and Cooley engineering data up on the Working Joe's Roundtable website under other HVAC data and the HVAC library. So go check that. Probably put it under service reference materials like where the piston chart is. We'll put that grill data there. So if you do use a vein anemometer, you'll be able to reference that data at any time. Even if your grill isn't Hart and Cooley, you can probably find a grill that's really close to what you're looking for and get that measurement. Now, the problem with this is there are there is some room for error because obviously all the air is not making it through this grill. So you're going to do a little bit of guesstimating as far as airflow. I think you can be pretty close. You know, with that two to five percent leakage rate, they were kind of putting it between 980, 980 and a thousand or so, 970 and a thousand, which I think is going to be right on accurate. So when we have our head-to-head -head matchup with the iConnect, we'll see what the iConnect says, and we'll take it from there. Uh, one of the things we're going to test is how long it takes for this reading to become stable. Because if we took the airflow measurement after the coil was dry, it would be higher with both machines, the iConnect and with the DAFM3. So we're going to give it a period of time to get that coil saturated with water, and then we'll take our measurements to see if they match up.